All right, everyone, welcome back to uh, another special episode of not only the Professional Brotherhood podcast, but uh, Jeremy. What's going on, everybody? Jeremy Sanders from the Crew First Culture podcast. So uh, this morning, uh, it's a Saturday morning. It's bright and early. Uh, it's bright and early. We'll just leave it, we'll just leave it there. Um, we are recording episode 100 uh, for both of our shows. Uh, and we thought it would be kind of cool to uh, get together since uh, it's not very often that things align <laughs> this way. Uh, first of all, it's not very often that our schedules align. And we were just talking about that before we got on the air because uh, it seems like Jeremy's schedule is pretty much the opposite of my schedule. Um, and it's just bizarre that i mean we both kind of started this whole podcasting social media journey right around the same time and uh jerry jeremy shot me a message the other day and said hey um i was just looking at your numbers and i'm sitting right at the same place as you as far as episodes uh so we're both gonna hit number 100 so he said you know what screw it let's get together and do 100 together <laughs> no it's it's really it's it's a very cool thing. Like you said, I think you started, you know, maybe a couple months at the most before I did. And the journey has been up and down and here and there. And, and you've definitely helped me out along the way because of that couple months of experience more than I did. So I really appreciate what you've done for me along that way. But we had talked on Clubhouse about kind of a funk that us – both podcasts, uh, Kitchen Table, Firehouse Kitchen Table podcast was in, and maybe even a couple more that, you know, just happened to be podcast hosts on the clubhouse, and everybody seemed to be in the same place, and I believe it was Tara from uh, Flame Decon kind of put out the the idea of getting together and, and doing a an episode together just to kind of break out of it, and so that yeah. kind of started it. But once I started seeing that, that you were sitting at 98, I was sitting at 98. I just had one recorded for 99 and, and you had one as well. And I was like, man, that, you can't get any better than that. That's, that's pretty cool. So no, it was really cool. And, and appreciate you to come on. Kara, sorry. I, you know, I'm so used to doing the good morning intros or the intros morning. and, and, and <laughs> Kara's here with us as well <laughs> so, obviously she has been a big part of a, of a lot of uh, a lot of my uh, a lot of my episodes uh, so good morning how good are morning. you thank you for joining us bright Happy and early this morning <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely been a it's definitely been a wild uh, a wild ride. And yeah, we we were we were. That's kind of how it is. This did come about. Um, for a while there, it just seemed like um, you know, it was constantly on the go with talking to people and setting up episodes and 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 finding guests and and people contacted me to be guests. And then all of a, then all of a sudden, it just kind of lulled out for a little mm -hmm. while. And it, it, which I was honestly i was okay with that as well you know yeah. because it, there comes a time you need you need a little break i think from anything you do it starts to become overwhelming you know yeah. and this is i don't want to call this a hobby for any of us it's it's a passion right the message yeah. the message that we're trying to get out is a passion it's not a hobby but there, there comes a time i think where even you're even you need a little rest from your passion to kind of recharge your batteries oh, yeah. think about the direction that you're that you want to go in why you started going in that direction in the first place and uh and just kind of refocus i guess yeah, yeah. i wonder uh, if the kind of reopening and that sort of thing or people if people are starting to have a little bit of zoom burnout or starting to <laughs> try to get out into the world a little bit more too has a little bit to do with kind of the drop off could be as well yeah 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 absolutely i mean and jeremy and i've talked about this before you know i mean when i've when I first started this, you know, just over a year ago, I mean, my, 
you know, I saw what some of the other guys were doing. You know, I watched the, you know, Jeremy and Rob, the National Fire Radio guys, some of the, you know, um, Ryan Pennington from uh, from uh, Jump Seat. You know, I watched what some of these guys were doing, and it wasn't all from behind a screen. You know, it wasn't all Zoom. It wasn't all phone calls. And I'm like, wow, this would be really cool. You know, nobody's nobody's getting out there there's lots of people podcasting and with different messages, but for, for my platform, I'm like, there's, there's nobody out there focusing on just the volunteer service and how cool would it be to get out there and like, you know, go to a firehouse with my recorder and sit down at the kitchen table and have a conversation or go to a conference like Jeremy, like you were just at, go to a conference and, and grab some guys and be like, Hey, listen, you know, come sit down, talk to me about what you're experiencing here. Why are you here? What are you learning? You know, and then COVID hit and it was like, yeah, all right, we're not doing any of that. <laughs> you know, we got to do it all from, we got to do it all from uh, behind the screen and then Zoom calls. Yeah. And the, I, I think what you've just brought up is, is really a cool deal is that niche. I don't, I don't know if that, if that's an okay way to describe it, but that, that hole that you are feeling that you're both feeling in that volunteer arena. And, and I say that speaking from, you know, just people that have reached out to me about a more volunteer type, you know, question or just wanting something geared towards that. And it's very sure. easy to steer them right to you guys, because that's, you know, I, I am a volunteer as well. But I don't say that very much because I don't have a lot of time to put into it. I just don't. And I, I feel bad for that. I, I try my hardest. But just like you just talked about about this podcast, it's it's another notch on that list. And when it starts coming to priorities about what's getting done, sure. you know, some of these things get kind of start get them up down. And especially with me, I'm I'm already gone a third of the days one of every three days, I'm not here. One of every three evenings, I'm not here, you know, dinners right. and all that. And so right. it's just hard. But anyway, I don't have the expertise and the knowledge to answer those questions, but I know who does. And that's really cool that I can just send them, you know, you, one of you two your way and, and that feeds that hole a lot, a lot better than I can. Yeah. Well, and, and, and I, th you know, and, we've created i mean all of us you know over the last year you know i mean like i said some of these guys have been doing this for for a long time longer than us but we've we've expanded on this um on this community of of people that have um you know a topic that they excel at or are passionate about and um it's it's just cool to have people from all over the place that can get together on a platform, whether it's a podcast or a, or a YouTube live or, you know, now clubhouse or whatever technology is going to throw at us next. It's, it's just cool to have this community where you can get on with, you know, a half a dozen people or more, right. And really throw anything out there, any topic out there. And you're, you know, you're going to get our input from the volunteer world because that's what we know. We're going to get your input, you know, from, from where you sit in the fire service and your, you know, and your uh, experiences with leadership and, and issues at the station and growth and family life and, you know, and the, the balance. And then you have all these other people that, you know, that kind of come into the fold that, you know, everybody's got varying years of experience. Everybody's got different sits in a different place in the world, which, which, yeah makes it so unique, you know, from the East coast to the Midwest, to the West, to the South, you know, it's like, it's, it, that's been the, you know, one of the coolest parts of the ride for me is talking to somebody from, you know, the Midwest or talking to somebody from the, from this, you know, panhandle of Florida and getting yeah. like this completely different, you know, it's the same fire service, but you're like, Holy shit, yeah. oh, <laughs> you yeah. know? So we're all the same, but the, there's so many uh, differences and things that I've never come across before that I probably wouldn't have had the experience to, you know, learn about if it wasn't for doing the podcast. Yeah. 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 Two, two things with that conversation that are the, the most interesting for me, for one, is what you're talking about. You know, we 
you do learn a lot. You know, you, you learn a lot from me being in Oklahoma in the center of America from you guys up in the Northeast, you know, very sure. corner or some Florida boys down way Southeast or, you know, somebody on the, the West coast out there, but also, and I think maybe even more importantly, you learn that you're a lot alike as sure. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the all the problems that you're dealing with at your department, all the irritations, all the things that that you hate about where you're at, or you're griping about where you're at, or you know you think you're on the worst department in the world. It's like everybody works for the exact same department. It's just bigger or different places. It's so weird how you'll sit and talk about something that you're frustrated about and you'll just get overwhelmed by other people saying, man, that's exactly where I'm at. I'm glad you talked about this because that's what I'm dealing with right now. And it's, like, it's, it's just interesting that we deal with the same stuff and that I, it's very good to see that because that helps me, at least me speaking personally, it helps me to just shut my mouth and, and get over it basically, because I'm not the only one dealing with this stuff. I'm not the only one dealing with, you know, people around me that, you know, are, are causing these type of feelings for me. Yeah. I, I just got to figure out a way to get over it and do what I can. And so that's been a very helpful thing for me to, to really just kind of get over myself and, and find ways to keep going. Yeah. Well, well, it's funny because I, I remember the first time I heard somebody say, uh, you know, up at the kitchen table, up at the fire academy, you know, it's, oh, you can change the sign on the front of the building. The problems are all the same. You know? <laughs> and I remember hearing that for the first time years and years ago, and I've repeated it. I can't say how many times over the years. Um, and, you know, it just goes to show you it's not a New York thing. It's not a Northeastern oh, yeah. thing. It's a it's a fire service thing and it you know and it and, and it's it's 100 percent true you know yeah. which is what's been part of what's been so great about about doing uh this because i mean look you know how many times have you jumped on a platform and 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 said it, it just dumped dumped what's dumped what's <laughs> bothering you right and you're like hey guys listen i'm just letting you know that i'm like I'm out of it this week. This is what's going on. You know, I'm over it. Um, I'm, I'm just fed up with the leadership. I'm fed up with, I mean, you, with your, your situation there with your, with your crew and your closet at your, at your <laughs> station. Right. Right. I mean, you were to, to hear with that whole thing, but then you start talking to other people and you walk away from the conversation, like, all right, I, yeah. I'll get over it. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, you know, it, we, we have all these avenues, all these platforms, you know, Facebook is great for certain things. Instagram is great for certain things. Podcasts are great for certain things, but that is one thing I'm really excited about as far as clubhouse is exactly what you just said. You know, you, it's not me getting on a microphone and talking. It's not even me getting on a microphone with you know, one or two guests or whatever and talking. Right. I mean, you, you literally get on there and, and I've done it several times, just exactly what you just said, just start out a conversation and yeah, some frustration comes out, but you know, there's so many people that can join in. There's so many people that are just sitting there listening and you never know who in that, you know, the, the audience, I guess is what they call it, but you never know who is needing to hear that right. or needing to hear that these people are dealing with the same thing I am or these people dealt with the same thing I'm going through right now and they made it through and they're doing great now or, you know, whatever. And I think it's such a great platform for just kind of building relationships because it's, it's live. It's, it's on, you know, it's, it's real time and yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anybody can talk and it's, it's a cool deal. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you guys a question and, and you know me, I don't script anything. So there's nothing, you know, I got all <laughs> kinds of paper here in front of me. There's certificates, there's whatever, a bunch, nope. of, bunch, I, of, bunch of junk, no highlighters, uh, but, but no, no highlighters today. Um, what, what since, since either like Jeremy for you starting your platform or Kara for you getting involved in 
the the, the platform um what what do you feel has uh, benefited you, uh, you know, personally the most, or or where have you? Do you feel that you have seen the most personal growth from being able to share or get involved with these conversations and being able to meet all these people that we all agree you wouldn't have been able to meet unless you were involved in something like this. Um. For me, I think you know, one of the interesting things from uh, my standpoint, when I started St. Florian Fitness, I was um, really, I didn't really have a lot of uh, connections before I started uh, putting St. Florian Fitness on my social media, my Facebook and my Instagram. And then of course, then um, you invited me to come on professional volunteer and um it was great to just make those connections to realize there's other people that have uh, the same kind of goals and drive to make connections with people in whether your career or volunteer um, about professionalism, about leadership, um, and then about, for me, spreading the message of fitness in the fire service and the importance of um, health and wellness for firefighters all over the world. And, and, um, and the opportunity to be able to come on and talk about that and um, recognize that other people are doing it in different corners and we can all work together to boost the message at the same time was sure. very rewarding for me because when I first started out, it was a little bit isolating, especially with some of the fitness stuff. Um, it was just kind of coming on to be a thing that people were talking about a little bit mm -hmm. more, which was great. Um, and I think it continues to grow. But when I initially started it a, a few years ago, uh, you know, it wasn't the hot topic necessarily about the fire service. So for sure. me personally, that was that was really great to be able to to um, spread the message that way and make those connections with people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And and it's and you're right. It's one of those things that it's it's wild. It seems like it went from. I mean, fitness on social media has ex been extremely popular for right. years, but regarding the fire service and, yeah. and fitness, you're right. It was like, it went from very few people talking about it. You know, you had, you know, Pip and the, yep. the five, five, five crew and, and probably a couple, probably a couple of firefighter functional fitness and a couple others. Um, and then all of a sudden it was like, what the hell? It's like every other page in my feed there's like somebody with a dumbbell in their hands with fire in their name like where, you know where did it all come from like you know it's like it's like boom just all of a sudden which is great i mean it's, it's oh, yeah. a great problem to have you know but yeah. jeremy what about what about for you man there are several things that i i could definitely pick out very easily and i just as soon as you asked that question i started writing them down so i didn't forget but um just finding networking basically finding people to keep that drive going, you know, it is the, the times that are low for me, I know that I can easily now, now that I've, I've met so many people, you know, air quote, virtually, mm -hmm. I can reach out and, and get some motivation, get some inspiration, get some drive back out of, you know, this network that, that has kind of been created. That's, that's a big one. Uh, accountability. Accountability is huge because I'm not going to get on here and talk about any of this stuff, you know, leadership wise or passion wise or anything family wise and not at least try my best to back that up myself. And so sure. me putting this stuff out has been a driving force to to get better at the same stuff I'm talking about. And and the last one is just hearing people's life stories, you know, some of my favorite conversations that have been on episodes have been with people that, that, yeah, they're well known, but we didn't even discuss the, the things that they're well known for, you know, like yeah. a, uh, a chief Starnes, I had him on, man, a, such an awesome conversation. I don't know that we mentioned the, the word thermal imaging camera one time in that right. conversation, which is what he's known for. Mm -hmm. It was just a, you know, he's just a great guy and we just got into life and family and faith and all that, you know, that that's the kind of stuff that, man, it, I love, I love that part of it. Yeah. And that's the, that's the stuff that I've missed the most, you know, out of kind of taking this break. So those are the biggest things for me. What about you? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to 
I'm going to agree with you. I think, I think the networking has been tremendous and, and I'm going to expand on the networking a little bit. I, you know, even though I have met and gotten, <clears throat> excuse me, friendly with a lot of people, um, that's been the, the, that's been the cool part for me. It's just, it's not just people on the screen where granted, you know, you know, where I haven't, like you and I have never met in person, although we've talked yep. to each other a bunch of times, you know, probably a hundred times, you know, Kara and I have been, been, we've, we've met in person once. Okay. And we're in the same state, you know, I mean, we're, we're only three hours apart from one another, but we've, yeah. we've met once in person. Um, yeah. But you know, I, to me, it's a big deal. I, I've I tell the guys at the at the firehouse all the time that you got to expand your network. You know, you yep. got to get out. You got to get out of Rock Hill. You've got to get yes. out of our county. You've got to get out of our state. You know, whether it's going to the county training center to work with other people from within our county, or it's going to the state training center to work with people from around the state, or going to a conference where you're going to meet people from other states. You got to get out. You got to meet people. You know, like that's going to keep you fired up. That's going to keep you loving what you do. And, and for me, that's, you know, that's been a big part of this. And, and, you know, to add to that, now all of these people are, are a good handful of these people are not just, you know, you guys are not just faces on a screen. Like I have your phone numbers in my phone. I can call you. I can text you, you know, Jeremy Donch, Rob Ridley, um, Pip, Sean, uh, uh, you know, uh, Sean up in Buffalo. Like these are uh, Ryan Pennington. Like these are all people that are phone numbers in my phone that I can legit pick up the phone and not just message them on Facebook. I can send them a text message and they're going to respond to me, you know, and they're going to get back to me and they're going to share um, their experiences and whatever I'm dealing with, you know, and that, that's just, that's just such a big deal, you know, and, yeah. and that for me has been probably the best part of the whole thing. Yeah, for sure. You got something, Kara, I didn't want to cut yeah. you off. No, it's okay. I was just going to say, you know, I, we always say like the fire service is such a small world. It seems like, you know, it's like six degrees of separation. Everybody knows somebody and you have all these connections that you, that you make within the fire service, but it also can be very isolating, especially to your point, Jeremy, if you have firefighters that are struggling with issues in their home department, it can feel like that is the only thing that is going on that that when, when yeah. you're going through that and you're struggling with it, yeah. it, it feels like that is that is only happening to you. That is only happening in your department. That is, uh, it can be very isolating. And, yeah. and because of you know politics or because of uh, the how sensitive the issue might be, it can be really hard to um, get a broader view. And I think that these uh, these kind of platforms have really allowed people to be able to reach out and talk and, and um, say, well, you know, I can get out of my own department and get an objective view, you know, in this way, yeah. talk to others where it, you know, you might not otherwise have had that opportunity depending on where you are geographically even. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, one of the other things, and I talked about this on, on the mutual aid episode I put up last week when I was talking about attitude, you know, mm -hmm. one thing that people need to understand is, you know, when you've been doing this for as, as long as I have, and it's hard to believe it's been that long sometimes, you know, but when you've been doing it for this long, you learn from your mistakes. And I say all the time, I have made plenty of mistakes, right? I have rubbed plenty of people the wrong way over the years and have handled things not in the most professional way, but you learn from those mistakes and you learn how to handle things. And, you know, one of the things I talked about was, was attitude. You know, we all have those people that we deal with that just always have the negative attitude. They're always bitter. It's like, you wonder why they even do the job because they always look so damn miserable doing the job, you know? And, and, it, you know, it took me a long time because there was plenty of times where I would come home after being at the firehouse or being at a drill or being at a fire you can ask my wife and bitch and moan and be like, what the, you know, what the hell is wrong with this guy? Or this guy's a prick or that guy's an asshole or whatever it is, you know, but now I've just kind of adopted, I, I've adopted what, what I talk about, you know, when I, when somebody is just miserable and you can tell that like, it, I, I just smile more, you know, cause like, I know it drives them absolutely bananas, you know, to see somebody in a 
good mood enjoying what they're doing and i'm like you know what bro you know whatever you're having a bad day i'm sorry to hear that if you got something to talk about i'll be happy to talk about it but if you're if you're miserable just for the sake of being miserable like i'm gonna smile enjoy what i'm doing and and it is what it is you know yeah yeah i i think you know i'm sitting here as as both of you are talking i think to a point i can honestly say that crew first culture has kind of saved my career and and i'll i'll kind of just de- de- put de- detail to that but when i before i had done any of this, I was in a pretty dark place. I was very frustrated. I was very angry and Mm -hmm. resentful at my department. And I was, I was coming close to being that guy that that you're talking about. I I remember the first few times we talked, you know, I remember (laughs) the first couple of times you and I talked and you were like, you didn't have a lot of good to say, you know, but you were, you were coming over that, you were breaking over that hump per se, you know? You know, I needed outlets. I, I yeah. needed good outlets to to send that passion and 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 those, you know, my message. I, I was not able to do that at my department, you know, and it's just started like bottling up inside. I wanted to do something leadership wise and 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 all this, and I couldn't do it. Well, if I didn't start all this, I, I probably would have been somebody that starts shooting out hateful emails and you know getting in trouble and. And, and exactly what I wanted to do, all of that would have eroded every bit of it. It would have tore my message apart. And so finding, you know, I started out writing articles and then started out in, you know, getting into social media mm-hmm. and then took a very big leap for me and started a podcast because that's not something that personally I would have ever thought that I, I would like. And it's just, you know, whatever, everything else. And it's it's just been great to have outlets to get that out, you know, and now, yeah, I have times where I get frustrated and, and I look at some things that I put out and think, yeah, there's definitely some tones of, of irritation maybe there. But yeah, like you said, when, when I first started, it's like, I, like I said, I started with articles and I guarantee you looking at some of those articles, it's like, you know, there's definitely some intensity <laughs> to, to that. And, and I'm just glad that, that I've kind of figured out a way to get some of that out. But that's realistic too, right? That's real life. I mean, I mean, you know, that's the the thing that sucks about social media is it's the highlight reel and everybody refers to the highlight reel, you know? So you're being, you're being real. You're sharing what's really going on. Look, I remember the first couple of times, I think one of the first episodes we recorded together, talked to you were like locked in your closet or something. You were like, <laughs> literally, <probably. laughs> you, you yeah. were literally sitting in your closet because you said, you know, the, the kid, there was stuff going on with the kids uh-huh. and there was stuff going on in the house. And you were like, look, this is the only quiet place I can find oh, yeah. in the house. I'm literally sitting in the closet right now, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, but that's, you know, that's, that's real life. That's yeah. relatable. You know, it's oh, yeah. not, it, you know, I mean, people don't see the behind the scenes. Even this morning, we were supposed to do this with the with the kitchen table guys. You know, we were all supposed to gather and get yeah. together and record it. And you know, they're newer in the in the in the podcasting world. Um, but uh, but they had some real life stuff with family to deal with and and had to bail early this morning you know so we're having the conversations well do we want to go on do we want to not go on you know and then you know Kara's messaging me I got stuff to do this morning well I got (laughs) and I got stuff to do this morning we've all got we've all got stuff you know that's going on that's that's life I mean we're not different than anybody else you know and then you and I are messaging we're like well yeah we can postpone but you know this is what my schedule looks like for the next week and this is what your schedule looks like for the next week week it's just you know it's all over the place take what um, you got and go with it yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly exactly but um but you yeah i mean it's go it's ahead sorry no it's okay you know when jeremy's talking about like looking back on you know uh the articles that you wrote and like where your head and your your mind space was at that time okay. um you know and then we're all talking about like wow i felt isolated or I didn't realize that other people were having these same kind of issues that, you know, it felt like it was the only happening to me. Like, don't you think that's so indicative of um, wellness and mental health in the fire service Yeah. and how isolating it can be and how it's not, there's not really a, a vehicle for, I mean, there, I think it's like fitness is becoming more prevalent and talked about now, which is needed and so important. Sure. But I think it's just so 
you know, I, I mean, when you look back, Jeremy, and it, it seems like, well, this was an opportunity and outlet for me to vent about it. You know, I had that, that uh, experience of writing about it and getting it out that way. Cause you didn't, you know, necessarily feel like there was a vehicle for it within yeah. the department, you know? So I think that if, I think that's really global. And I think that it's definitely uh, something that's happening for firemen all over the, all over the place that there, there's yeah. not necessarily that outlet. And so when you can make these connections with people and ha you have somebody that you can reach out to, uh, I think that, that has so much value. Yeah. And like, like Chief said earlier, I, I cannot echo it enough of what he said about you have to get out of your department or you have to get out of your little circle. Yeah. It is so important because, you know, just speaking for, for me, I, I work for a department that it, it's very close. You know, we, we don't do a lot of outside training unless you are seeking it out on your own and you're doing it on your own, which, you know, okay, whatever. I don't, I don't care. I'm, I'm at the place right now in my life that, okay, I, I will find the money and I will take the vacation time and whatever. But if, if you're coming on new or you got a few years on and you haven't worked with anybody like that, they just don't realize what's out there. So much knowledge from some of these, uh, these conferences, these online classes, uh, just, just anything, you know, podcasts. It's amazing the amount of growth I have achieved away from my department. I, I don't, I, I, it's hard for me to even think about where I would be skill wise or leadership wise or, or anything if I just stayed in the mentality of, of what I need is here. You know what I mean? And, and so reading books and everything else I just said, it has been an amazing tool for growth for me. And, and I just, I want to say it over and over again, if you have not experienced that you've got to do it, you know, and, and not just for that, but for what you just said, Kara, and what we talked about already is that networking and finding out that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. There are so many people out there that will, and are so willing to support you and be with you and help you. You just gotta, you just gotta look and man, it's, it's out there. Just, just spread, spread your wings a little bit. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, and 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 you're right. There are so many people that just kind of lock themselves in their bubble. They think that their bubble is the only way, right? And you know, I don't know. They almost look down on on uh, exterior influences, outside influences, and it's 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 crazy. You know, I mean. Um, you know, you, you, you can only, I mean, you can only hear the same voice so many times, <laughs> you know, you eventually you want to hear it. You want to hear a different voice. You want to hear a different opinion. You want to see a different way of doing things, whether you're going to adopt that way of doing things or not, you know, maybe you're going to take something as whatever, as simple as a hose load, not that hose loads are simple. We could talk about that for 12 hours, but <laughs> yeah. you know, you know, but take something as simple as a hose load. All right. So maybe the way that they just showed you at the conference that you went, doesn't work for you and your department a hundred percent, but maybe 50% it works. Like, so maybe you yeah. can adapt it to a way that's going to work for you guys, but it's still a different method. It's still a different tool, you know, and, and that could apply to, that could apply to anything anything in the fire service right anything anything that we do i think sometimes um i've had the experience of uh some leadership not wanting to um necessarily uh learn somebody's different way of doing things just because you know they think that their way is the only way or that that kind of old school like this is how we do it this is how we've always done it kind <laughs> right. of thing and that's it you know, and so we don't want to expose our, you know, uh, crew to other ideas because that can be dangerous to our line of thinking. And right. that is, you know, that's a level of leadership that I struggle with because, you know, if you don't have self-reflection and you can't say that there's a different way to do things or different ways to learn, or um, even if you go and see something and you watch them do it and you're like, oh, that's great. And it works really well for them. And it works well yeah. for the type of engine they have. And it works well for the, the type of crew that they're running, but it wouldn't work for us. 
there's still value in it. You know, it's, right. it's just so that that closed mindset of, you know, I don't have anything to learn. I don't have anything to gain by leaving, going outside of my comfort zone is really unfortunate. Yeah. Right. Right. If, right. If there is one statement that I wish that we could ban in the fire service, it's, it's what you just said. Yeah. That's, that's the way it's always been done. That's the way yeah. we've always done, you know, that I, I hate it. And, and something that's kind of scary to me is, is that mentality that you're talking about, Kara, that, you know, we, we know everything we need to know. We, we have everything set up perfect. It's always worked. And so we don't need to go out and learn anything else that man, that is a scary mentality because you're just, you're not figuring anything out. You're, you don't know what is wrong with your department if you don't kind of go out and see other ways that are better. And like, like you both have said, yeah, this might not work because a guy from New York city is teaching this class. And I work for a department that has less people on the entire department than, you know, one of his districts, but I, I can learn different things from it. And, and I, it's just, it's just a scary mentality if, if you are unwilling to reach out and learn. Well, and listen, and, and I just heard this. I, I, I tend to listen to other people's podcasts when I'm either in the car or mowing my lawn. Like those are my, those are my times. Right. <laughs> and I was listening to uh, Corley Moore's podcast yesterday when yep. I got home from work and I'm mowing the lawn. Um, you know, firehouse vigilance and he's got weekly scrap and and he look he's got so many great guests on i don't even remember who i was I, know. <laughs> I, I, I don't even remember who i was listening to i'm just gonna be i'm gonna be 100 percent transparent and tell you guys i don't remember who the guest was because he always has a good one yeah. um but you know something along those lines was said in in, the, in that episode was that you know we all we all trained for like our little piece of the pie like our our little our home turf our district you know but we all go mutual aid to other districts and and like for me i mean my you know my first due area is you know there's it's all pretty much the same sure there's a little commercial but it's mostly residential but we go a lot of mutual aid to our neighboring district which has a little bit of everything right and has all kinds of different things that you could experience well if you're not tr if you're not training for the response that you could take in when you're sitting on a cover assignment at the di ne district next door to you, like yeah. that's, that's where you're going to end up getting caught with your pants down. Right. Because you're going to get sent to something that you're like, Oh, I never thought we'd see anything like this. Well, you know what, in your first due area, you might never see anything like that, but in the next due, you know, the, your, your yeah. mutual aid area, you, you could very well. So it, it kind of, you know, you, you listen to these, different points of view, these different stories, you get out and experience these different things, like we've been saying since the beginning. And you're like, it's, it's eye opening. You're like, holy crap, I never thought of that, you know. Um, and, and that's why I tell people to, like, we've all just continued to say here to get out and, you know, experience different things, listen to different people, spread your wings, as you put it. Oh, yeah. I'm up here in central New York, which is in the middle of the state. Right, right, right. The right. middle it's of the state. Just, I always like to just make it's that. It's very delineated. Jeremy, just in case you didn't know, it's very delineating lines here in New York <laughs> State as to what's us. what's where, you know, you have to really define you. yourself very, very well. <laughs> <laughs> Big state more than just New York City and more than slightly yeah. north of New York City. The whole world New up there. I thought but, New York City was New York State. I thought yeah, they were the I same know, thing. That's what everyone thinks. Right. <laughs> yeah, um, right, right. But in my, in my area, I have a, you know, it's kind of unique because um, I'm volunteer, I'm volunteer on my department. And, but we are, are for our mutual aid areas, I have an immediate mutual aid area that's career that we go to frequently. And then, I have, <laughs> and then um, I have rural smaller departments that we're also automatic mutual aid for sure. I maybe only have like one or two guys and like, these guys that are used to operating at that level all the time where they're just like chronically short staffed and, you know, they, they just are, that's just how they run, you know? And, um, but then we go to a career department that's staffed and manned and, and, you know, I have both and it's like, so you, you can't have that narrow view that I can only learn the way that my department does things because that's yeah. not going to be effective to serving the community that we're responding to. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, want, I think. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I just along those lines, you know, the the dynamicness of our what we do is so wide and broad that you can never say I'm going to be ready for everything. You just can't, you know, if you're honest and and all that. But my main goal is that I'm growing. I'm growing every day, you know, some type of growth in some area. And if I do get caught with my pants down, like you said, if, if I get in a situation that I'm just overwhelmed or don't really am not prepared for, it's not going to be because I haven't tried my best to, you know, prepare myself. And so that's just kind of the mindset I have. Am, am I going to be ready for every single thing that's going to come up? Probably not but I'm going to try my best to stay as sharp as I can so that those situations are very, very limited. That's, that's kind of yeah the mindset I take. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So we are, we are streaming this live on the Facebook page and there are some people actually up drinking their coffee, oh. uh, <laughs> lis- listening to us this morning. So I just, <laughs> so I just want to, uh, um, now I kind of feel like Corley a little, I don't know how the hell he does all this stuff. At the <laughs> I same don't time. either. <laughs> but <laughs> But anyway, so uh, um, uh, Cameron Bowman said, hey, Chief, uh, Don Calarusa, that's Don from All Hands down in Jersey, said congratulations on 100. Uh, Eric Lubnetsky, uh, he was one of our guests. He's a, formal, a former volunteer up here by me and, uh, and uh, uh, FDNY brother. Um, congrats on 100. Marco uh, Asomi, and I'm probably going to butcher some people's last names, so I apologize <laughs> for that if you're listening ahead of time. It happens to me every day. Um, <laughs> good morning, everyone. Happy to catch it live. Jeremy is one of the most genuine people out there. There Appreciate you go. That, Marco. Okay. Um, Marco also said, I say the same thing on my department about getting outside our 108 square miles. Um, they look at me like I'm crazy. Uh, you want me to give up a Saturday? I ask them to just give me one Saturday a year so you can meet someone new and learn something. Absolutely. Great, yep. great, great point. Uh, and that's a good way to go about it. You know, just, you know, give me something, give me one day a nothing. month, something, whatever it yeah. is. Um, Kevin King, congratulations on a hundred. Kevin, thank you. Uh, Kevin's been here since, since the beginning, listening and sharing. Uh, here's to many more. Um, Billy Kyo. Kiowa. I know I'm butchering that one. Sorry, <laughs> Billy. Um, happy 100th episode, y'all. Nice to see Jeremy back on here as well, since he's who got me hooked on your message last year. There you uh, go. Uh, thank you, Billy. Appreciate that. <laughs> um, and one, let's see, Marco said one more thing here. I have to be careful. I find myself spending more vacation time on classes than I should be. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't yeah. forget about the family. Yeah, oh, you're, yeah. you're, 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 you are correct. Uh, yep, and uh, PJ Covert, PJ is uh, another one of our Jersey brothers that says congrats on a hundred. And uh, PJ, thanks for getting up and uh, joining us this morning. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you would much rather be, uh, you know, enjoying the, fresh air of jersey down there doing something else <laughs> <laughs> so i'm sure he'll have a response but um yeah no so all right what else that's cool i'm thanks for joining Let's... us everyone because uh right. you know i just that was a last minute i literally said to jeremy as we were logging in waiting for Kara to get on i said you know what? i'm gonna throw this up on facebook live and see what happens um, yeah thanks so. for the heads up on that thank you, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, i did i gave you a heads up you weren't on <laughs> yet I was like, you're like, i'm like literally over my computer you're like we're live oh, <laughs> listen adapt and overcome right? I, i'm uh, here yeah, yeah. you are here yep you, you, you don't have your same normal background we're getting a good view of your little tchotchkes and stuff behind I have you. A, i'm in the kitchen the china cabinet <laughs> yeah <laughs> the beautiful background yeah. hey, i was having technical difficulties i don't know what was going on but i had to move rooms yeah oh, well you're getting the grand tour yeah so what else Let, well, let's see what else what else can what else can well, we something something i think is really exciting and we've talked about platforms and and different things like that and yeah. I, something I think is really, really exciting is when you see you know, Kara says that she came from, you know, the fitness mindset. That's kind of what got her started. I'm, I'm like a leadership kind of, that's what got me started. Mm-hmm. Chief, you're probably leadership, the volunteer mindset, you know, all the, we all have our little areas that's, that you got kind of 
involved and started. Well, sure. if you look at social media now, it's almost like there's different categories. You know, you have the fitness categories of, of pages. You have the, the leadership, the tactics, the skills, or the mental health. There's yeah. lots of pages in these subcategories. But what I get most excited about is when you have these subcategories working together and, and, and yeah. bringing those completely different groups of people together. It's just amazing the, the power that that is because the fitness community, it's huge. Mm-hmm. And, and you with fitness, the cool thing about that is you're going to get a lot of other people besides firefighter people right. in that because it's just fitness is fitness. And then when you add in like uh, next, uh, next rung and I got your six just yeah. did a kind of a collaboration event right. this past week. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You know, you have that fitness community and you also have that mental health community or those people working for that and you put them together and man that's that's powerful stuff right there and i love seeing that because that's when you really kind of compound the effects that that we can do here sure sure and and you know it's just you know as you meet people and as you grow and as you network um you 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 find different avenues to continue to share your message, you know, um, you know, I mean, Kara gets out and does, uh, you know, some in-person, well, she's getting back out and doing some more <laughs> in-person, you know, in-person stuff at, at firehouses, you know, helping, yeah. de- helping develop fitness programs and, you know, and, and, it, it, you know, there's only so much you can do online, you know, yeah. there's, there's only so much motivation you can do online. Um, but being able to get out and get into a station and help create a program or help get them started or, or what have you, you know, you're starting to get out, um, you know, and to some of these, I I learned a new word the other day, uh, micro conferences. I didn't know they were, I didn't know they were called (laughs) micro conferences, these little small conferences that are popping up all over the country, um, which I think are phenomenal. You know, we, we've got a couple of them here in the Northeast, but not as many as seem to be popping up in like the West and the Midwest and the South. And I'm kind of hoping that that trend changes because I'd love to see more of these smaller yeah. conferences popping up all over the place that are, you know, a little bit more affordable for people, a little bit easier yeah. to get to. Um, but you're getting out and spreading your message, right. At a couple, at a couple yes. conferences coming up, which is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we pieced our class together about, you know, volunteerism and setting volunteers up for success. And, and, and we're hoping to, you know, we're, we've got a couple of dates scheduled to, to roll that out and spread that message. So it's, you know, you, you just gotta be, if you, you can't be afraid to put yourself out there. And that, yeah. and I think that's, that's another, that's another, uh, you know, nugget that, that we need to share. You know, some people look at, at, at folks like us and i know i've talked to you know jeremy and rob from national fire radio about this before about like the haters you know um people don't there's people out there that aren't going to look at three people on a screen and be like i wonder what it took for them to just put themselves out there and start talking about what they were passionate about instead they're like oh you know who the hell do they think they are <laughs> you know who, who those three people think that they are you know yeah. it, it it takes a lot to you know step up and be like you know i think i got something to share and i'm just going to throw it out there and if somebody wants to listen somebody wants to listen yeah. you know but you watch the progression you know like you said you started with writing some articles that maybe were you know maybe we're a little on the angry side you know but whatever that developed into what you're doing now and it just will keep on developing which is which is a great thing to see and it's beneficial to everyone in the fire service you know i mean for me i don't care about the numbers you know i don't care i don't care if we put this up and you know 50 people download it or 2000 people download it i would rather that 50 people download it that it actually that they relate to it. They need you know? to hear it. Right. They yeah. need to hear it. Like 50 people listen to this message and they're like, wow, you know, what, what Jeremy just said impacted me or what Kara yeah. just said impacted me or what, you know, uh, Marco said in the chat comments, holy crap, you know, 
that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to my firehouse and I'm going to try and get our crew once a month to go out somewhere else and do some training other than here. You know, I think that's the, that's the, the, the big, you know, that's the big thing. And I think that's what we're all trying to do. Yeah. I've gotten some, um, some people, of course, some people just say mean things anyway, but um, <laughs> some people <laughs> have uh, said to me before, like, why are you posting your workouts on your page? Like, you know, it's, you should be making money from it, whatever you shouldn't, you shouldn't be posting them because you're not getting any, nobody's paying you to do it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you know, that's not why I started it. If I have, if I have some firefighter somewhere in um, an area where, and especially with COVID that they didn't have access to a gym and I can show them like, here's what you can use at your station to get yourself in shape and get yourself healthy. If, if I reach, you know, one person and it helped them, that's why I'm doing it. I mean, sure. I mean, I offer, you know, services that I um, charge for, but the message in the page is there to help people that are in the fire service to, you know, stay healthy and, and um, be well and be able to do the job. So, you know, the um, putting yourself out there and then having to risk what people think of it, or, you know, some people maybe don't think that it's a good program or don't think that um, you know, there's any value to it. That's, that's okay. Because if there's that one guy that said, you know what, I really need to look at myself and, um, get myself back in shape because I'm blowing through a bottle in five minutes and I can't go up the stairs and I can't get, I can't get my partner out. I can't even lift, you know, my own weight, much less somebody else's. And he makes positive changes. Um, that's, that's the mission, you know, that, that's why I'm doing it. I'm not doing it for the haters. And I'm not doing it for the people that are, you know, judging me on every little like lighting of the pictures and what, like, that's not why I'm doing it. You your know? filter, you're not judging. Right. You're not filter. Doing it. <laughs> okay. you, why did you, use, why didn't you use a filter? Why did you use a filter? <laughs> why do you use this curling bar instead of an Olympic bar? Like who, who cares? I'm moving weight. Like that's the point, you know, right, like right, right, I'm right, using right, what right. I have available to me, you know, like, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it just goes to show you, I mean, look, anybody can comment on anything that, you know, I mean, people will find something, you know, whatever, you know, I mean, I've had people send crazy comments, some amazing comments, and then like the most bizarre comments, like, you know, like, wiser you know wiser horns in your background well because i hunt <laughs> yeah i have to tell you oh, i'm anti-hunting okay i don't know what to tell you sorry <laughs> you, you know but it's just it's just crazy uh pj chimed back in he said there's nothing better than spending time on the beach watching episode 100 nice so yeah good, good for you good for you <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> so. to go to go back to the you know you brought up the micro conferences the something that, that is great about those is you know you you have these big names you know in the sure. in the bigger conferences you you got big name presenters and they're big names for for a reason you know they yeah. got some great presentations but you, you go to these smaller arenas and man there are a lot of talented speakers that you never heard of a lot of inspirational people that you're going to find at those places that you're not going to find anywhere else. And that's, that's a cool deal because man, there, there's, there's a lot to learn from not only the big names, but there's a lot to learn yeah. from, from these, these, you know, more up and coming people as well. Well, it's about, it's about being relatable. Right. Yeah. I mean, you talked to John Ford, right. On your, on no, your, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So you've talked to John, I've talked to John on the podcast, you know, and one of the things that I loved talking to John was, you know, and, and he came out and said it, he said, you know, when did he realize that, that he had a message or he had something to talk about? He was at a conference, you know, listening to one yep. of those great big names who are phenomenal people to listen to and have, you know, great lessons and stories to tell, but he also realized that 90% of this does not apply to me. Like, yep. you know, like it's great. Um, it's, it's good knowledge, but it's, it's not nothing I'm going to take back home because it just doesn't apply to me and my yeah. small rural paid department that, you know, on a first alarm assignment has 10 guys, if we're lucky and 
you know, and it's and it's true. I mean, nothing against like you said, nothing against that speaker or that conference, because these guys are there for a reason. They are they're a wealth of knowledge and and have a great message to tell. But yeah. it is it is cool to be around some of this talent that is out there that um uh, you know is really really good at what they do but but where they do it is just more relatable to you and where you're at in your life or your department yeah uh, i got one more message here let's see well, who's this uh, P, uh, this is pj and he's not talking about being on the beach on this one he says uh, uh speaking about haters we have big turnout we have a big turnout in seasonal membership so he's on the northern jersey shore down there so they have a big big turnout in seasonal membership uh so the senior guys are just the member themselves show the new members how to operate stretching lines scba or whatever other departments started making memes about us and posting them on social media well you, you know uh, I think I it's think the only, world, the fire yeah, service world, <laughs> what 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 PJ you need to learn or what you need to know is something that I believe we probably both got told and, and heard it from the, at the same time. Our friend John Sahatchin, mm -hmm. when we were together and I still think about it all the time, he said that if, if you're doing the right thing for the right reasons and in the right way and, and you can answer yes to all those questions. Sorry, I don't. Yeah, who cares? I don't have anything else to say. That's yeah, who cares? If I can answer yes to those three questions, then I'm going to keep going. And if yeah. you don't like it, you can turn the page or the channel or whatever yeah. else. Yeah, and and you know what? And look, that's a common fire service problem. What he's experiencing, right? Because some departments it's, it's highs and lows and especially in the volunteer departments, right? It's highs and lows. You're, you're, you can be riding the wave, taking all kinds of new members. Your, your membership is great. You know, everybody's training, you're getting all your alarms in whatever. And then sometimes things, whatever you have a weekend where everybody's on vacation. It's the middle of the summer. Everybody decides to take a vacation at the same time. And, you know, you have to resound or go mutual aid to, to respond to a call, whatever it may be, yeah. you know, people, People like to dwell on the negative, you know, instead of looking at a department like that, that realizes, wow, we've got a huge seasonal pop population here. Where are all these people coming from? You know, are they coming from New York, Connecticut, Pennsylvania? Are they already trained as firefighters? How can we capitalize on that? Because I'm sure their call volume doubles in the summer where he's at. I don't know. I'm just kind of spewing here, but I'm sure, you know, there's communities on the Jersey shore where their call volume spikes hugely in the summertime, you know? So instead of other departments looking at that and saying, wow, these guys are onto something here, you know, they're using this talent that's in their community for the summer and they're boosting their ranks, you know, that's genius. Oh no, we'll just make memes about it. We'll make fun of them, yeah. you know, because yeah. that's, you know, because it's easier, it's easier, you know, <laughs> Not, and, and instead of saying, wow, you guys are really onto something. Can you tell us how you set uh -huh. that up so we can do the same thing? You know, they're like, oh no, we'll do, you know, we're, we're going to, we're, we're going to talk crap about them on the internet yeah. because you know, that's yeah. what firefighters do. What's that <laughs> phrase about? I don't know. There's a, there's a saying something about uh, firefighters and, change and whatever i don't know whatever <laughs> but all right what else let's uh we should start wrapping this we should start wrapping this one up it's a saturday i know everybody's got places to be um cara would you like to uh to to start the wrap up yeah i just um you know i i thank everybody for um listening to the podcast and for following you know uh us on social media all of us all three of us and you know, I just encourage uh, folks to um, reach out and interact with us because that's one of the greatest things that we all, you know, love and I love the yep. feedback, love to make those connections and um, love to help out our brothers and sisters, you know, in, in the fire service, because that's, that's what we're all here. And that's why we're all doing this. So, you know, thank you for, for listening and tuning in and, and um, definitely keep the feedback and comments coming good or bad. I got brought yeah. shoulders. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Jeremy. Yep. Yeah, same. I, I really appreciate, you know, the the involvement that I've gotten, the feedback I've gotten, the, you know, people that have reached out while I took a break and just kind of checked on me, said that, you know, whatever. I it it's it's been really humbling 
I did not plan on taking a break, but uh, I'm glad that it happened and, and, you know, some good has come from it. So thank you for that. Thank you for being patient and, and hopefully we're going to pick up the momentum where it was and, and keep going. Uh, one more thing before we stop, I yeah, want to sure. mention that you, you talked about Corley Moore earlier. Yeah. He, he's uh, putting together a benefit conference for some fallen firefighters in Oklahoma and they've got a giveaway right now. Him and I are working together to give away a couple passes. So if you have not seen that, go to Honor the Fallen Fire Conference. It's on uh, Facebook, and you'll find that post, and it'll tell you what to do. But that's for two full passes to the whole conference. So great opportunity right there to to get some great training. There, there's some great people coming yeah. to present at that and some great hot classes, and it, it'd be a good, good time. So if you can make it to Oklahoma in, uh, at the end of June, get on there and, and put your name down or share it with somebody that, that might be, uh, might be able to do that. So one to say that for sure, to get that absolutely, the word absolutely. out for that, but, but I, I appreciate, I, I love, and we've talked this whole time about, I love reaching out and meeting new people. So I, I thank you both for your friendship and, and kind of helping me along my journey and everybody out there for, taking time out of their life and their days to listen to me ramble and just look forward to seeing where it goes from here. So thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll second that. And, you know, I, I think I can speak for both of us that, you know, the amount of people that we have or all three of us for that, you know, the amount of people that we've met along, along this journey, um, and some have been, you know, very, very involved in, in the growth of, the podcasts, whether it's behind the scenes or coming on as a guest, you know, you mentioned John earlier. I mean, John was very, very uh, instrumental in the first, you know, few, few episodes. He was my first guest, uh, you know, the first person that reached out to me and was like, Hey bro, I love what you're talking about. Um, you know, I'd love to come on and, you know, offer some insight. And, yeah. uh, you know, we did quite a few episodes together and, um, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's in a, place now where he's got a growing business he's got a growing family he's buying and flipping and selling and moving houses so you know life life gets in life gets in the way and oh, yeah. uh but you know i don't i don't forget those people and what they have done you know for for me and for the for the growth of the podcast and the platform and like kara said you know the the ability to talk to people network to people like we've said just have somebody reach out whether it's a question or, you know, just their experience. Um, yeah. You know, I, I really encourage everyone to keep, keep on doing that because that's what's, that's what makes all of our platforms uh, grow and, and continue to grow, you know, and it's, uh, it, you know, it's, it's a community, right? Right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Jeremy Sanders started crew first culture. Sure. I started the professional brotherhood, but, but it's, it's a community of, people and if we didn't have the community it would be a very short-lived journey <laughs> so oh, yeah. so sure. uh so yeah i just want to again uh thank everybody for um you know their part in it and uh we would i don't think any of us would get to a hundred episodes without people being a part of that journey oh, so yeah. uh you're all a part of it and uh we thank you very much and um you know just keep doing what you're doing you know keep uh you know Keep uh, keep reaching out, keep uh, chiming in, and uh, keep keep um, sharing your input with us. We uh, we truly appreciate it. So, all right, everyone, thanks for thanks for getting up early on a Saturday and doing this. I appreciate it. Thank and, you. And uh, this this will be on um, this will be on a lot of platforms, right, Jeremy? This will we're going right. to share this on both the podcasts. Yeah. Uh, it's it's already live on on Facebook. We'll share that on the crew first culture facebook and then we'll get it up on youtube and everywhere else so anywhere if you're if you were tired of us before you'll be <laughs> tired of us when we get done yeah. sharing this so all right everyone thank you again thank you stay so. safe and we'll talk to you soon